A thread that I have noticed in my comment section and on Twitter for a long time now is an increasing distrust in technology companies to manage our data and keep us safe. Put simply, people have lost faith in tech companies. They don't trust Apple or Microsoft or Google to store their data in the cloud. So today I'd like to examine how we got here. And today's video sponsor, Acronis, thinks that they might have a solution. So where even do we start? Well, let's go all the way back to the beginning. The first computer program classified as a virus was known as Creeper. And in 1971, it spread to mainframe computers manufactured by Digital Equipment Corporation. To combat it, a creatively named counter program called Reaper was created to search and remove the virus. It wasn't until the 1980s and the spread of personal home computers that things started to become more advanced. In the 80s, privacy was less of a concern because computers were largely disconnected from each other. But malware was absolutely a risk. And a lot of that stemmed from the very unprotected way that files and file sharing worked. I'm talking, of course, about these. Floppy disks have very little forms of security, and it was very easy for malicious actors to install boot sector and file infections on these things. And the risk was considerable when you consider how many people were using pirated floppy disks back then. Unless you yourself copied directly from an original disk in front of you, there wasn't really a means for ensuring that third-party software or even first-party software from unscrupulous companies didn't have malware involved. Most forms of personal protection would have been self-run, just being careful and making sure that you're buying legitimate software. But with this increase in stolen and pirated software, as well as malware being spread through stolen and pirated software, companies started devising ways to stop people from stealing their stuff. The most interesting one by far has got to be the game Dungeon Master, which used an interesting quirk of floppy disks to their advantage. Floppy disks are divided into tracks and sectors. And with Dungeon Master, they renamed Sector 8 of the game disk as Sector 247, which could be read by the game system, but which was impossible to write as someone trying to copy the game. And that meant that if you tried to pirate the game Dungeon Master, it would not be able to read the contents of that sector, which would progressively cause more and more game-breaking bugs as time went on. By the late 1980s, copy protection on games as well as legitimate antivirus became a major industry to combat the growing threats that were emerging. How insidious was this virus? Well, it was, it spread very quickly. With ViruScan, Nod32 antivirus, and Virex, the first tools capable of solving problems and finding solutions to malware were spreading. This old Macintosh SE actually has one of the early antivirus programs installed on it. If you take a floppy disk and stick it in the drive here, the system will read through every single sector to check for any unwanted software. And yet, you can actually hear it reading each individual sector. It's really cool. And with something as small as a floppy, you can literally just go through every single piece of data on this drive and analyze it. Although, it's not always accurate. For example, this is what it looks like when it triggers an alert. Oh no, there's malware detected. But if you actually look at the disk, um, it, it's, a, it's a Macintosh boot disk. So yeah, it, it's not always accurate, but it's at least something. Virex might have been all you needed in the 80s, but by the time the 90s come rolling around, computers are getting faster and more complex. The internet age is dawning, and software companies were jockeying to take the lead on who could offer the best antivirus. And uh, guys, th things got kind of messy in the 90s. Look, don't ask me why, but I have the original accessory kit from a 1995 Macintosh Performa, and it's a mess in here. So as we all know, Apple is known today for their very minimal packaging. They don't even include a power brick in the box of your iPhone anymore, but this is what they included in 1995. Holy moly, what, what am I looking at? We've got software. 
This is a, what is this even? This is in Spanish, okay? We have uh, the, com the comprehensive medical reference. You can order that. Uh, this is a, a Mac Home new owner's issue with, oh, buying your printer. Secrets of System 7.5. Oh, we've got our Apple stickers. Some things never change. Oh, buried under here, under this bag, is our system backup disk and, you know, an update to the Performa booklets. There's some actual stuff in there. But then there's this. Why does it come with an entire booklet of random CDs? The Family Doctor, third edition, my first incredible amazing dictionary. I think I actually used this in elementary school. Thinking Things 2. Like, uh, what? Look at all of this junk. This is what the 90s were like. But you know what? Underneath all of this bloatware, what do we find? A coupon code for Virex. Look at this. We've got a mailer, because it's the 90s, and you, you fill out all of your stuff for your protection services order form. Register your Virex. Volume discounts save you money. Look at all of this junk. This is what the 90s were like. This is the rise of bloatware. Fortunately, as we get into the 2000s, Steve Jobs has now come back to Apple. All of that heinous bloatware is gone. Our products are nice and clean and minimal and all is right in the world and there were no problems ever again. End of video. Except that no, of course that didn't happen because that's, that's ridiculous. The lines have been blurring for some time now and I would argue that the age old battle of viruses versus antiviruses is kind of behind us. It's a much more complex landscape now. People aren't just worried about their data being held ransom, they're worried about their data being lost. They're worried about their data being stolen, not from their hard drive, but from the cloud through data leaks that seem to happen every two seconds. And that's where our good old video sponsor, Acronis, comes back into play. Because ever since they launched True Image Server back in 2006, they have been focusing on a holistic approach, not just finding and destroying a specific program that is malicious. It's been kind of a meme for the past 15 years that Macs don't get viruses. Last year there are 114,000 known viruses for PCs. PCs, not Macs. So you just grab this. Hey, I think I got to crash. Hey, if you feel like that'll help, good. But that comparison makes things seem more simple than they are. After all, it's no secret that Mac OS can be very secure, but I would argue that at times they take it too far. Have you ever seen this message? Have you ever had to disable system integrity protection just so you could install a legitimate piece of software and have more control over your computer? Yeah, I would argue that you can take things too far in the other direction while also forgetting about a crucial aspect, a motivation behind why people want to protect their data. And that's that quite simply, people don't wanna lose their stuff. Whether it's to a virus or a failed hard drive, they don't really care. Losing your data is losing your data. And this is where Acronis's more holistic approach is beneficial. The goal is not as simple as hunting down a malicious program. It's keeping everything in your home office safe, regardless of from what. For example, there's this. This is a 12 inch Retina MacBook and these things are notorious. They can suffer from catastrophic failures. Everything from that one single USB-C port to the CPU itself to the SSDs, they fail all the time. And so it doesn't really matter if your MacBook is secure, if your SSD just dies. So with a Cronus CyberProtect Home Office, which used to be a Cronus True Image, you're not just protecting one specific computer from one specific type of threat. The goal is whole home protection. Peace of mind that your data is protected and accessible, not just from hackers and viruses, but from the inconveniences of life and poor hardware design. Setting it up is super easy. Just download on all of your devices and you've got access to a personal secured network in your own home. Five terabytes of cloud backup is included so you can make sure that each of your devices is always uploading its contents to the cloud. I can tell you from personal experience 
how painful it is to lose, oh, I don't know, let's say an entire external hard drive full of Final Cut Pro libraries. And that is where Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office comes in. It's sort of this big bubble wrap around everything that I have set up here to make sure that all of these computers, like this Retina MacBook that could fail at any moment, or this MacBook Air that I'm typing this script on, everything is wrapped under that five terabyte backup and when it's connected to the internet, it updates its content with new files. Everything is safe and secure in that bubble. Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office is about 55% less expensive than using standalone solutions. And it's honestly easy to see why you'd wanna have them bundled together. Data is data, so no matter what the threat is, you want it to be protected. As mentioned before, Acronis sponsored this video, so if you want to save 20% off Acronis Cyber Protect Home Office, click the link in the description or go to go.acronis.com slash lukemiani and enter code lukemiani2023 at checkout. So hopefully this video gives you an idea of how we got where we are today. This whole idea of cybersecurity as we know it is really interesting in a vacuum, but I think it's all the more valuable when you have this context of how we got to where we are now and what we can do to improve our situation. So big thanks to Acronis for sponsoring this video. It makes a lot of really interesting projects like one that you're gonna see with that Macintosh SE I showed you earlier possible. So. With that, I would like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video.